So once you've located the Exchange plugins from the Cinema 4D folder, you want to install them into your Plugins folder, which is in the After Effects folder within the Applications folder. Once you've done that, you can then import these AEC files into After Effects. Now you'll see there are all my multipass renders that have been rendered out. And also, if we have a look in here, here are all the RPF files for the RPF sequence. Now, I don't need to know how to composite them. All I need to know how to do is open this file here, which is an AEC file. And if I double click that, that's going to open up all of those passes and RPF files in After Effects for me. And it will composite them into a composition. And if we have a look at this project here, you'll see this is how the composition will look when you first bring it in. And all I've done here is I've put the passes into individual folders just to keep things a bit more logical for me. So I have different passes in this folder from that folder. That's all I've done here. This composition is exactly how it will be seen when it comes in from that AEC file. You'll notice it's composited all my passes together. And if I preview that, it looks exactly the same as the render from Cinema 4D. But you'll also notice it's brought in a camera and lights from Cinema 4D, which means I can now composite new elements into my scene. Not only that, if you have a look down here, we have things like the reflection on a separate pass. So if I move back to here and toggle that on and off, you'll see I could do things like just come in here, bring my reflection down a little bit, and even blur it. So let's just add a blur to that just to give us something quick and easy to add to it. So I'm going to go into my blurs and choose a directional blur and give it a blur value. Of course, directional blur is now 32 bit, which is fantastic. And then we can blur it as if the reflection is being blurred on the tiles there. So lots of other things that we can do. If we solo that, you'll see that's only the reflections. And if I put the transparency grid on, you'll see that that is the reflection pass. We also have refraction passes, atmosphere passes. And they're composited together using blending modes. So you'll see that if I switch off the ambient pass, you can see what effect that has on the footage. And if we have a look at the modes, you can see it's using add mode to combine it. So Cinema 4D figures out the correct modes to use. So you use multiply for things like shadows, add mode for things like highlights or atmosphere. So yeah, by using different blending modes on the footage, you can really change the look of the footage. I don't really recommend doing that though, because it's set up how it should work correctly. But other things we can do, you'll notice that also the lights have been brought in. Not only the lights up here, which will actually affect any new items that come into the comp, but also the effect of the lights in Cinema 4D have been rendered as separate passes. So I could even go in and start creating flashing lights just by animating the lights. And I'll show you how that's been done in a final comp. Just to show you the structure of this though, if I open up this floor light, You'll notice it has several elements to it. It has shadow elements of the light, the specular elements of the light, and the diffuse elements of the light. So you can control all of them individually. So a massive amount of control over the rendered elements, but also over the cameras and lights that are in there. So if we have a look at this one here, which is the end composition, you'll notice what I've also done here is placed a 3D logo into the comp. So if we have a look at that, first of all, in draft, fast draft 3D mode, you'll see what I've done here is I've composited this logo in, and this was an Illustrator file that I've converted to outlines. I've then extruded it. All I've done is just placed it into the scene. The camera has been exported from Cinema 4D, and it matches the movement that was made to create the rendered files. So all I need to do is position an element into my scene where I want it. And because the camera move is in there, it will relate to the camera move in the same way that the rendered footage relates to the camera move, 
making it seem as if the object is within the scene. And because we also have the lighting there from Cinema 4D, that's also going to react with the layer. So very easy to composite new elements into the scene like this. Now we can also do some other things. We can add depth of field to the camera. So we could switch on depth of field and enable that. I'm not going to do that right now. In fact, yes, I will. It's not going to have an effect right now because I'm in fast draft mode. But once we go into ray traced view, you'll see that that now will have depth of field. And we can also put a lens blur effect on the background layer to match that up with the camera. So here I've put a lens blur effect on an adjustment layer. And if we put this on final quality ray trace, we can get the depth of field of the camera to match the depth of field of the background. Now that's a little too much. So I may go in here and just adjust that blur radius down to maybe a value of one and get much less of a blur. And similarly with my camera, I would go into my camera settings and just open up my depth of field settings, go into my camera options and adjust the aperture settings down a little bit lower, maybe to about 10. The other thing that I would need to do here as well, just to improve the quality is go into my Ray Trace 3D and just improve the rendering quality of the Ray Trace 3D. So I generally find that a value of eight and a cubic is better for this kind of scene if we have depth of field and some camera blur in there. And you'll see that once that renders, we get a much better result. Now you'll notice down in the timeline when I opened my camera settings, here are the keyframes from Cinema 4D. So it brings in all the keyframes that I had in Cinema 4D. And if we have a look in our views, so let's just jump back to Fast Draft View. And I'm going to go to my custom view and select my camera and go to view, look at selected layer. You can see that camera moving along the path that was created in Cinema 4D. Let me just zoom out so you can see that a little bit more clearly. So there I have my fairly complicated camera move from Cinema 4D directly in After Effects. And this is why the layers that I place into the comp match up with the camera move. So let's go back to Active Camera View and just show you another couple of things that I've animated in here just for a bit of fun. So I've animated the lights using the wiggle expression and I've linked them together so that they have the same colors. And if we just RAM preview that, you'll notice that the lights are in fact changing colors. Also, the beams of the lights are changing colors. So all I've done here is animated the actual lights themselves, but I also need to match that up with the lights that are shining on the footage from the passes that render the lights, if you get my drift. So these lights only affect new elements like the logo, for example. If I was to switch them off and switch my logo off and preview it, you'll also notice that I've animated the lights that are shining on the background. And how have I done that? Because that was actually rendered in Cinema 4D. Well, I've done that by coming down here to my light passes and animating those. So if I select these two here and double hit the E key, you'll see they also have expressions animating their colors exactly the same. And all I've done is link them to the color of the light option for the floor light layers. So I can take the color and map it to here. And I've used the tint effect to do that. Just using the white value of the tint effect will add the same colors to my lights. So when they're matched up together, notice without my lights, the logo is not reacting to the lights. But if I put these lights back on, the logo reacts to the lights. So you can animate lights, you can adjust the reflection settings, you can adjust the depth, atmosphere, reflections, all sorts of things can be adjusted using multiple passes. Um, you can have a look at the finished render of this. Obviously, this is just in draft mode. Uh, the finished render of this is with your training files. 
But just one more thing before we finish. Also, we rendered out an RPF sequence. Now, if I double click inside the project panel, I just want to show you how to import that individually. If you don't have the plugin for Cinema 4D and you're maybe working with another application, you can also import RPF sequences. And the RPF sequence is rendered from Cinema 4D or another 3D application. And if I select RPF RLA sequence and click open, nice thing about this is it contains tags. And you'll see if I select the file up here, it has Z depth, object ID, UV coordinates, etc. embedded into that file. There are some of the things that are included. If I drag that onto my new composition button, that's going to create a new comp for me. And I can do things like make adjustments to things by using the channel effects. Now, there are lots of 3D channel effects in here. You have 3D channel extract, which allows you to do things like extract the depth mat. And you can see there I can adjust the, the black and white points of the depth mat there. You can also choose object IDs or texture UVs. And all of these things can be selected material IDs if you want to choose specific materials. Now, you need to tag these in Cinema 4D to be able to do it. And you do that by adding compositing tags to the elements within the shot. You can also use an effect called Extractor. An Extractor also allows you to extract some of the data from these files. If you want to get help on Extractor, there's help in the online help document. But finally, I can also select the file and go to Animation, Keyframe Assistant, RPF Camera Import. And that's also going to create a camera with keyframes that match the camera that was used to shoot the footage. So compositing new elements into the shot is just as easy as it was using the camera that comes in with the AEC file. Difference here is I can adjust the lighting, I can adjust the reflection a little bit easier than I can with an RPF file. With the RPF file, I need to use effects to extract data and create mats to adjust my footage. But that's a quick run through of the workflow between After Effects and Cinema 4D. Of course, once you've finished your composite, you can actually go to File and export Cinema 4D as well. And that will export a Cinema 4D file. So I'll just say test.c4d, and that's going to export a Cinema 4D file for me. So there we go, a really comprehensive all-round workflow from Cinema 4D to After Effects and back again.